I kind of jumped into this one not realizing what I was biting off because it was a lot more difficult than I expected. I didn't dream that when I went to Poland I would discover a country with a rich culture. I didn't know Poland at all. From my childhood I was interested in music from the very beginning. I started playing cello in the seventh grade. I used the school cello through high school. When I graduated from USC and began teaching in Illinois, I borrowed a cello from the local Chevrolet dealer. Then he moved to California and wanted his cello back, so that left me stuck without an instrument. Then Matt Chambranovich, my neighbor, who had been to Poland, brought back a violin on one of his trips. I was intrigued with this instrument, and so I inquired about the possibility of ordering a cello. Franciszek Mardua in Zakopane was the man. I ordered a cello from him. When the cello was completed, it was not allowed out of the country, so I decided I would go over and pick it up myself. I booked a two-week stay in Poland. This is a violin which was made in Poland by Franciszek Mardua in 1977 or 78. It was brought to the United States by Matthew Chambranovich who was our neighbor in Rockford, Illinois. And when I saw this violin, I uh, was overcome with a desire to make one myself. It has beautiful workmanship. It's, uh, it's really an elegant violin. And so this is when I began inquiring into studying with Mr. Mardua in Zakopane. I went down to Zakopane to meet Mardua. He lives at the Ulitsa Kościeliska 44. I had his address written down. And when I saw the shop and smelled the resins that he uses for varnish and smelled the pine and the, well, just the sawdust and everything, it just sparked a, an interest in me in, in studying with him. So I asked if he would take me on as an apprentice at some future time, to which he responded, come any time you want stay as long as you want. And when I asked how much it would cost, he said, nie wiele, not much. By this, I later learned that he meant nothing. My job at Rockford College was secure. They gave me a sabbatical leave of absence. I arrived on the 1st of August, 1983. Mardua's plan for me as an apprentice, he said, I expect you to make one violin, and if you're industrious and you're hardworking, you can make two. The first word I learned was shmiao, boldly. I took inch-long strokes with the saw, and he said something to the effect that the whole saw is paid for. You need to use the entire length of the blade, so shmiao. I had a dictionary with me all the time. I looked up each word he said. Within a week, I could ask for any of the tools. Please pass the saw, please pass the file, and uh, so on. And by six weeks in the country, I was able to go shopping for him, buy, buy groceries at his request, and, and I was able to order train tickets, and I, I started traveling around Poland on the weekends. By October, I had completed the first violin. And then I started another one and had it done by Thanksgiving time. And then he said, would you like to build a viola? I said, yes. And by Christmas, I had the first viola done in the white, that is, without the varnishing. After that, I did a second viola early in 1984. And then I wanted to build a cello. So I asked. And his son Stashek happened to overhear my question and interrupted and said, Walter, the answer is no. No one has ever built a cello in our shop before. It takes up too much material and too much time and too much shop space, and you know how crowded we are in this little shop. The answer is no. My relationship with Stashek was, a, was at times a little bit strained. We had a bit of friendly rivalry going on because uh, I worked faster than he did. Stashek left town that evening, and then I asked the question again, can I make a cello? And the old man said, get your plates cut out, and when Stashek gets back from Poznań, 
it'll be too late for him to intervene. This rivalry kind of came to a head during the construction of the cello because Stashek decided to make a cello at the same time I was working on mine. I worked hard and stuck with the job, seldom taking breaks, working from morning till night. I had no other business in Poland, so I worked many times until midnight, as late as Mardu would work. Every day when it approached oh, 10, 30 or 11 o'clock, he would look at his watch and say, Oh, Walter Kupšok, refuse to pus no trais spać a nie pracować. He says, Oh, dog's blood, Walter, look at the clock. It is so late. Too bad we have to quit working and sleep now. And then we always laid the tools down, left the shavings wherever they were. We never swept the workshop at night. We just went to bed and then we cleaned up first thing in the morning. So I built a cello as my fifth instrument. In all, I built a quintet of instruments. This has been a great deal of satisfaction for me. Knowing Polish, I was called to serve a mission in Poland from 90 to 93. That has changed the whole course of my career because during those three years I was able to learn more Polish. Now I teach it at BYU. I was recruited to teach here in 93 and I've been here since then. And it's just opened up a whole new field for me. I really enjoy it. To make a violin we need very little. We start out with a wedge of wood like this, which is opened up, joined in the middle, and the sides here are formed on a mold. Once the box is made, we carve a scroll, a peg box, the neck, insert the neck into the violin, and then finish it off. This is my latest one, and this is number 30. This is a viola that I built just recently, so... Three violas or...? Uh, all, instruments all together. Several violins, one cello, and then the rest have been violas. Great. Cut.